1950s science fiction podcast starting a brand new season season four episode one comic book review from the ec archives welcome back to the 1950s science fiction podcast in this episode i will be discussing three comics from the ec archives These stories were originally published in Incredible Science Fiction issues 31 and 33 by EC Publishing. The full story, first, excuse me, the first story, Fulfillment, was printed in issue 31. The second has been also published in issue 31. And the last story, Kaleidoscope, was published in issue number 33. In a previous podcast, I discussed EC Comics. You can refer back to Season 1, Episode 3, when I provided the background for EC Comics and talked some and talked some about their stories. Additionally, I did a show on a lesser-known comic from the 50s called Keaton of the Star Patrol, which is similar to Flash Gordon with the, with the protagonist policing the universe. In this podcast, I'll be talking about three stories from the EC Archives, Incredible Science Fiction which was published by Dark Horse Comics in 2017. The three, story, the three stories range from comical to serious and thought-provoking. Fulfillment. The first story is titled Fulfillment. It was written by Jack Oreck and illustrated by Barry Kingston. The story was published in Incredible Science Fiction, issue number 31 in 1955. I found, it to, I found it to be quite amusing, yet still a well-crafted story. The story begins with the ancient Egyptians worshiping in a temple. The head priest discusses how the great god Ra wants to walk the earth. The scene then shifts to a comic panel depicting a 1950s-style rocket ship landing on an unknown planet. The ship's, the ship's two occupants, a married couple on vacation, unfortunately experience a breakdown. It turns out they are are lost on a planet that is off-limits to beings like them. The husband steps outside the ship and sees a a planet covered with lush jungles and animal life. He erects a radio beacon and asks help from the Galactic Patrol, hoping they will rescue them within a week. However, days pass by and no one comes to, to the rescue. The man's domineering wife insists on clearing the jungle around the ship with a specific type of weapon thinking that the ship was missed because it was hidden in the foliage. The husband was hesitant, but eventually used the weapon known as the Min Tubes, which had a devastating impact. It destroyed everything within thousands of square miles, wiping out jungles and animals alike. The area resembled the aftermath of an atomic bomb detonation. This weapon was intended to be used only in dire emergencies, and the wife convinced her husband that this was one such situation. A galactic patrolman finally finds the ship and comes to the couple's aid. As soon as he arrives, he observes the desolation of the planet and concludes that the men tubes were used. The patrolman rebukes the couple for using the weapon and emphasizes they should have not been on the planet in the first place due to the planet's protected status. He informs them that he must report the use of the weapon and they may face a fine for having used it. Meanwhile, the wife protests the patrolman, the patrolman's warning and explains that it was an emergency and they had no choice but to use it. However, the patrolman re- reiterates that they may still be fined for use of the men tubes. After repairing the ship, the patrolman discovered that it, that it was a simple fix and he and was able to get the couple back on their way. As he prepared to launch, the husband took one last look at the planet dreaming of escaping his domineering wife and becoming a god. They wore new oxygen masks that were designed for more efficient use as they took off. A primitive human hiding behind a rock observed the blast off. The couple's masks resembled bulls or steers with large snouts and ears. In the final comic panel, the high priest stood against the stone bust of a bull-like mask worn by the couple. He proclaimed, Behold, the image of Ra! I found the story quite enjoyable and intriguing. It revolved around the ancient astronaut theory, which is not very popular until the 60s, 
but gained traction in the 50s with the surge of UFO sightings. People claimed to have had contact with extraterrestrial beings and traveled to other planets with them, which was dubbed the contactee movement. It was fascinating that the rocket ship was fixed with just a simple repair. I suppose the husband knew how to fix it but didn't want to do so so he could stay on the planet longer. Finally, I found it amusing that the police treated the violation of the law as though it were a parking ticket. The next story is called Kaleidoscope. In issue number 33 of the publication, there, there was a story called Kaleidoscope. The story is a serious one and starts with a comic panel of a man observing a view screen on a rocket ship. The following panel shows a battle between the spaceships of Earth and Venus. The story is written by Jack Oreck and illustrated by Jack Davis. The comic panels depict how the planet Venus conquered Earth using their superior power, while the protagonist, Davis, desires to actively resist the robot occupation force that subjugated the humans. He is warned to be careful as he is among the few rocket ship pilots remaining. Later, the panel displays the scenes of Davis fighting and defeating the Venetian fleet, seeking revenge for the damage they have inflicted upon Earth and its people. As he reminisces, he recalls finding an intact rocket ship in a nearby forest. Davis informs the members of the resistance forces about his discovery, and they start repairing it. Different resistance fighters work together to make the rocket ship flyable again, but the effort results in one death. At this point, it seems that Davis has successfully destroyed an entire fleet, enemy fleet on his own. Then he lands the rocket ship back on ground, where he encounters an old man. To his surprise, Davis realizes that he has gone, that he has aged by at least 30 years since the Venusian invasion of Earth. Suddenly, he hears a woman's voice calling out to him, and it turns out to be his wife. She urges him to stop messing around with the old rocket ship before the robot guards catch him. In the final panel, the couple is shown walking back to their encampment. Davis had been imagining what it would have been like if the ship could have taken off, but in reality, it would have been one ship against a large fleet. He has now become so broken that he can only reminisce about what could have been. It was a poignant tale highlighting the possibility of a similar fate befalling any nation. The fear of foreign invasion was a constant presence in the minds of, of Americans during the 1950s, especially during the early days of the Cold War when the Soviet Union was seen as a potential threat. Moreover, the memories of the recent World War II remained fresh in everyone's thoughts. Has been. In this discussion, I will be highlighting a comic story entitled Has Been, which appeared in issue 31 of the comic book. The story was written by Jack Oreck and illustrated by Wally Wood. It is a thought-provoking story that deals with a father's son who has a dream of exploring space, exploring space and now must defend the Earth from invaders. The story is quite captivating and leaves one with much to think about. The opening comic panels depict a battle in progress, being observed by a military officer dressed in a futuristic spacesuit, complete with a helmet and goggles. The goggles are reminiscent of night vision devices used by soldiers today. The officer reflects on his current role as commander of military forces and expresses his desire to retire as soon as possible as he has grown weary of leading troops into battle. As the captain of the ship directs a fleet against the enemy ships, memories of his childhood conversations with his father flood his mind. He tells his son that space is a realm for the young and not so much for the older generation like himself. The boy's father is a rocket ship designer and the son is fascinated by his father's creations. The son expresses his desire to fly one of his father's rockets one day and explore the vast expanse of space. In the comic book panel, the story is told in flashback mode where beings from another world have gone to war with Earth and are threatening the planet with an ultimatum. The father being too old the father, being too old to help in the war effort, is advised by his friend that it's up to the young to fight and protect the planet. Later, the man's son is inducted in, 
in, inducted into the military and qualifies for the rocket pilot program. After the captain graduated from pilot training, he was appointed to lead the fleet of warships defending Earth. The first battle was lost, but the captain's leadership improved and the fleet was able to repel the invasion force in the second battle. They even inflicted damage on the enemy's homeworld. After claiming victory, the captain ordered the fleet to return home. During the journey, he reflected on how space had become his home, but not in the way he had hoped. The constant battles had left him battle-weary and he longed to, re to retire, but he knew he could not. When the fleet arrives at Earth, the crew performs a pass and review ceremony to bid farewell to the captain. After that, the captain heads back home to visit his parents. Interestingly, his father is the same man who designed the rocket. In the comic, battle comic panels, the captain is shown gazing up at the stars while his father is, while the father approaches him. The father notices his, his son is in tears and tries to console him. It's then revealed that the captain is not an adult, but a 15-year-old boy. The father acknowledges his son's emotion and says that growing up is inevitable. The story I came across was thought-provoking. It described a society that required the sacrifice of its youth for the survival of the country. I couldn't help but think that the writer had the, the conscription of youth during World War II in mind when he wrote the story. It had only been a decade since Germany and Japan were forced to conscript youth for the defense of their respective countries during the war. This story demonstrates how relying on the youth of a country to protect itself will have far-reaching effects. Teenagers would be forced to mature early in life without the usual rite of passage afforded to them during peacetime. They would miss out on high school proms, the freedom to choose where they want to attend college, and even having little time to engage in relationships with the opposite gender. Even marriage and family may be postponed. Similar things are also present in popular science fiction novels like Ender's Game and The Hunger Games. That concludes today's podcast. I hope you found it entertaining and informative. Stay tuned for the next episode, which, which will be released as soon as possible. In the meantime, you can follow me on X at Edward German 3 on Instagram at Shutterbug1681. You can also visit my WordPress blog at the 1950s Science Fiction Podcast dot blog where you can leave comments and feedback. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to your continued support.